we're going to make a free or almost free sanding system. Hi, I'm Kent and welcome to Turn a Wood Bowl. Today I'm going to show you how to make a almost free sanding system and it's super simple and you're going to want to use this for all sorts of things, but as bull turners, there's one particular task that this sander will be great for helping you with. And we'll get to that a little bit further in the video. But first, I want to talk about unitaskers. What's a unitasker? Well, a unitasker is usually a device or a tool that is only used for one thing. And they are to be avoided at all costs. Well, at most costs. And I have one in my shop. What makes a unitasker such a negative thing? Well, basically it uses up a lot of space and isn't used for a lot of different purposes. Instead, what we want to do is we want to optimize space so that you have tools that are used for multiple things and are used often. And those are the only tools that you should have readily available to you. And those are the ones that are taking up space, but it's okay because they're being used. Well, I've got a unitasker and my unitasker is my disc sander. Now, when I got it, I was all excited about it. And to be quite honest, I use it for quite a few things for shaping wood and doing projects, but I don't use it that much anymore, especially with bolt turning. And there's several reasons which I'll go through right now. Well, the first problem with this unitasker or disc sander of mine is that it takes up a ton of space and I'm barely using it. I could use that space for other things. The disc on the sander is very difficult to change. You have to basically peel it off and then that makes the sanding disc that you have on there pretty much useless. It's hard to put back on after the fact. So to change out grits and go from a coarse grit to a fine grit is not something you do with this particular tool. The other thing is there's no variable speed. This thing has incredible power, incredible torque, and it's 100% on all the time, full speed. So if you want to do some delicate sanding of sm small pieces in that, it's really tricky. And quite honestly, I've taken some small wood pieces up there and thought that I could go and do a quick little shaping of an edge in that, only to have the piece go flying across the shop. And that is not fun or safe. Also, the platform is not easy to remove. There's many times when I don't want that platform in the way, especially when I'm sanding bowls. I want to get that out of the way so that I have plenty of room to use the sanding disc. And with this particular sander, the platform doesn't come on and off at all without disassembling the whole machine. So this whole process got me started in thinking, all right, there are times when I could use the disc sander, but I really don't want it taking up space. How can I replace that disc sander with something better that is more suited for what I'm doing? And that's where I came up with this idea, and I think you're going to like it. So what do pretty much all electric woodworking tools have in common? Well, they have an electric motor that goes around and around and around, and that's kind of it. There's really not much more to it if you think about it. You got the table saw, you got the band saw, you got everything is that way pretty much. Even the, the lathe. But wait a minute, we have ways to attach things to the lathe. What if, and I can hear you shopsmith people out there going, well, yeah, and the shopsmith is an interesting tool that takes advantage of the fact that all of the woodworking tools operate on an electric rotating motor. So the shopsmith allows you to do lots of different things using that one electric motor. But since we have a lathe, we can do something similar. We're basically going to need three things. We're going to need a piece of plywood, preferably something thicker. This is three quarter inch plywood. We're going to need a face plate that matches your lathe. And we're going to need a sanding disc. Now I'm using a 12 inch sanding disc. My lathe will accommodate that. If you have a smaller lathe that has a smaller swing, you can use smaller sanding discs and you won't need quite as much plywood as I'm using. You just make the disc so it fits your particular lathe. But I'm using a 12 inch one because these 12 inch discs are readily available. And what's really cool is they're available with adhesive on the back. So essentially 
This is our biggest expense, is purchasing this disc with the adhesive on it. You most likely have a faceplate around that you can use, and a scrap piece of plywood's not too hard to come by. All in all, that's pretty much free in my book, compared to the Unitasker sanding machine that costs up to $300 and more, which is pretty pricey when you think about it, for something that you don't use quite that often. So I'm going to take this over to the bandsaw to get it trimmed up so that we can put it on a lathe. Actually, before we head over to the bandsaw, I'm going to mark the circle that's going to be cut here. I'm going to use a straight edge to find the center of the board, just connecting the opposite corners. And then I'm going to use a compass to draw the circle. I'm going to make the circle a little bit bigger than my 12 inches. That way I've got some room to, to work with. Again, you're going to want to use a thicker plywood. This is 3 quarters of an inch, which is just over 2 centimeters. And I'm going to trim it out. I'm going to trim outside that line as well. I can dial in the exact diameter on the lathe. This is just going to be a quick removing cut here to get material off the board so that you bring it over to the lathe and put a nice edge on it. When you're using the bandsaw, notice how I have the pivot point, the X on that board, is about 90 degrees off to the side of the blade. That's what you want to do. You want to pivot around that point and have it just off to the edge of the blade itself. Okay, so now we have a plywood blank and we're going to attach the faceplate. I'm looking down through the center of the faceplate and lining that up with the X that's in the middle of this board. And I'm going to drive screws in. The first screw I'm not going to drive all the way. I'm going to drive it about halfway. And then I'm going to go to the opposite side. That way, if I had tightened that first screw, it's almost always torques the faceplate and moves it a bit. So I'll just work, take my time and work around and get all of the screws in place here on the faceplate. Now I'm going to go ahead and put all of them in just so we've got a good secure connection. I'm also using I'm also using an impact driver which if you're using a traditional drill like I used to moving up to an impact driver is night and day different. It is so nice. Those screws are driven in. There's no stripping of the heads. It's really really nice. I'll put a link to that drill in the description below. So we're going to go ahead and attach the plywood blank with the faceplate to the lathe and I'm going to bring the tool rest into position and we'll start trimming up that edge. Now I'm just using a simple push cut from left to right. Now this is different than doing a bowl. We do not have grain direction here. We have random grain direction deliberately. That's what makes plywood strong. As one layer is oriented in one direction and the next layer is oriented, oriented in the opposite direction. If you look at the edge there, you can see all the ripped out grain. That's because I moved from left to right and pushed off that top grain. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to work from right to left and then left to right so that I'm not ripping out the material on the edge of the wood. So I made it almost through and then I came back in from the right side to finish up that cut. So here it is again, moving from left to right and then right to left. I've got enough room to work here that I can kind of play with this. I'm just going to sneak up on the size of the sandpaper disc and I've got plenty of room to go. If you're liking this video, do me a huge favor and click that like button. Thank you. Okay, so I'm going to continue trimming the cylinder or the disc down to size. Now another big thing to keep aware of here is the kickback and sometimes we'll get a, a kickback or a skip back where the tool will jump back. Well obviously we don't want that so one of the ways to avoid that or the way to avoid that is to make sure your bull gouge is at a 90 degree angle when you first present it to the 
surface of the wood. That way you're going to have a nice clean cut. It's going to engage and cut the wood versus getting skipped back. I've got a video all about skip backs and you can learn how those occur and why those occur. Check out that video and you'll learn a lot about those. And it'll, If you're having skip backs, you'll learn what's causing them and you'll be able to prevent them. Here you're seeing the back and forth. So this way we've got no ripped out material. If you look at the edge of the surface here, it's relatively clean compared to how it was initially. All right, that's looking really good. I think we're there. I'm going to pull the tool rest away and sand up that edge just a bit. And then I'm going to scuff up the surface. I want this scuffed up so that the adhesive backing of the sanding disc will grip the wood a little bit better. All the dust you're seeing here, by the way, is a side effect of sanding, obviously. I'm wearing my full respirator, and I'm also running my air filtration system on the ceiling right now. The air filtration picks up a lot of the small particles. My respirator prevents me from breathing those as I'm close to this. It's actually probably the most dangerous thing of wood turning or any woodworking is the sanding and the sand and the dust created from the sanding. You want to be aware of that and you want to make sure that you're wearing proper protection. All right, so we have our disc. Everything's set up. I'm going to take this piece of wood and I'm going to clean up the edges of this because I'm going to be using this for something you'll see in a second. You got to remember, as I just illustrated, that the right side of the disc is going up while the left side is going down. So we got to be aware of that rotation at all times. Pretty much working on the left side only. And I'm just cleaning up the edges of this so that I can smooth it out a bit so I don't have the splinters or any rough edges on there. All right, that's looking pretty good. Now what I have here is a fabricated metal base. Now this is something, if you're into metal work, you can make this yourself, or if you know somebody that does metal work, you can have them do that for you, like I did here. This is actually my dad made this for me. Thank you, dad. I appreciate that. And this will fit right down into the banjo. So I'll pull the tool rest out and I'll put this in place in the banjo and I will have a working platform for which I can do sanding of smaller parts, different pieces if I'd like. What's nice about this is I can move it around different heights, I can move it to different locations on the sanding disc, it gives me a lot of options. But the biggest option, which you're going to see in a minute, is I can completely remove it out of the way and have full access to that disc and that's really critical when we're doing sanding of bowls. Again, that impact driver is super nice for these, this type of work. So that'll drop right down into the banjo, tighten that up, and we've got a working platform to sand against. So now I can bring a piece up to the surface and work it effortlessly, keeping a 90 degree angle on the face or on the sanding edge. So that's an option. You don't have to have this option. I know that occasionally I like to sand other different wood parts. So this is something that's important to me and it's nice that I, to be able to put that together and you can make it yourself. So it's not super complicated. But for the biggest part of, for bowl turning, we don't need this platform at all if we don't want. I'm gonna illustrate that in just a second. Now, as you can see, the Dust is starting to build up in the sandpaper. And there's a real simple rubber eraser, a cleaning eraser that can be used to pull that dust out. And it essentially rejuvenates the sanding disc back to almost a new condition. I'll put a link to that in the description below too, so you can check it out. 
All right, now this is why we made this disc. This is a once turned green bowl. That means this wood was wet when I turned it, and I turned it once right to the final size. And that's one way you can do a turning. However, as it dries, it's going to distort. And when it distorted, you saw the base was wobbly there. So I'm just going to barely touch it against the new sanding disc. And guess what? It's done. That wobble that was there just a second ago, just, just the high spots needed to be leveled off there. That wobble that was there before, absolutely gone. That's why I needed this sanding disc. And if you want to learn more about turning green wood, then be sure to check out my new Tree to Bowl online e-course. I'll have a description or a link in the description below and you can check that out. We go over everything you're going to need to know about taking raw wood and turning it into a bowl. This is another cool feature of this disc is I can store them on the wall out of the way. That little knob on the wall is produced by Glenn Lucas, and I'll put a link in the description for that as well. Well, as you can see, you don't need a multiple hundred dollar machine to do sanding for you. As a matter of fact, something much simpler and much less expensive, almost free, is a much better solution, at least for getting really flat bottoms on your bowls, as you can see here. And the cool thing about it is you can have multiple discs and they're all super simple and cheap to make. You could put multiple discs together with different grits so that you can have different opportunities. Not only can you get the bottoms of your bowls flat, but you can use it for all sorts of other sanding things, especially if you make a platform like I showed here. Do me a favor, leave me a comment below and let me know if you're going to make a sanding disc like this for your lathe or maybe multiple discs with different grits on them so that you can use to flatten the bottom of your bowls or maybe to do other sanding projects with. Let me know by leaving a comment. I greatly appreciate that. And if you haven't already, please click that like button. It helps this video and helps the channel and helps everything out when you click that like button. Thank you very much. Be sure to check out my website, turnwoodbull.com. All right, guys, until next time, as always, happy turning.